In this uh, session, I am going to talk about uh, how analytics can play a role in the insurance industry. Just giving you a high level uh, overview of the role of analytics in the insurance industry. So here I would be talking about uh, the data, what kind of data is available in the insurance industry, the role of data in the insurance industry. So just uh, uh, what is analytics per se? How do you differentiate between operational and traditional analytics? Then what is internal data and external data? What kind of external data is, uh, uh, is typically available in insurance? And I'm looking at uh, the overall data flow in an insurance industry, which is very much important uh, to see how the analytics flows. So overall, the data and the flow of the data in the insurance industry. Then we are talking about uh, the analytic maturity. So different levels of maturity with respect to uh, analytics. So we'll be uh, talking about uh, just someone uh, who, who is using uh, analytics for uh, historical evaluation versus who is uh, uh, going towards more and more of uh, using analytics for various predictions and a lot of other stuff. So this is what we talk about the different levels of maturity with respect to analytics. Then in the insurance industry, what are the different kinds of analytics that are expected or that are being performed? Right, like marketing analytics or financial analytics, different kinds of analytics that play a role as a part of uh, the key insurance analytics. Then we are talking about uh, the different processes, okay, underwriting process, what kind of analytics it uses. Similarly, uh, the claims process, what kind of analytics it requires. So we are talking about key insurance processes and the analytics that is uh, involved in them. Who are the different uh, users uh, of analytics in insurance industry and what is the level of usability they carry? Now, once, uh, uh, now that we understand that analytics is uh, used heavily in the insurance industry, but still what are the challenges of implementing uh, analytics in the insurance industry? What is the role that technology is playing as a part of analytics and what are the various technological related advancements that have caused the analytics as an industry to flourish and how has the entire space of insurance analytics evolved over the past and what is the stage of insurance analytics in the current scenario. So this is a very high level overview of the insurance analytics per se. We all need to accept the fact that insurance is one of those uh, industries which is heavily data driven. There's a lot of data that is available uh, irrespective of the kind of business segment that it is in. Whether it's a PNC insurance or a life insurance or a health insurance company, Typically, you see, they offer some kind of a service. So they create a financial product, an insurance policy. And it's not a physical product. And more or less, it is a, a kind of a promise. Almost all the insurance products that are typically being offered by the insurers, they are typically promises to pay some amount of, uh, uh, some amount of benefit in case some specific risk occurs. So they are indemnifying, they are, uh, uh, they are uh, uh, indemnifying the value of the loss and uh, they are uh, uh, mitigating the loss, mitigating the loss of the policy holder. And in some kind of policies, they are doing the investment decisions on the behalf of the policy holder. Now this whole process what right from the initial marketing of the product to 
the policy holder making a decision regarding the buying the kind of experience that the customer or the policy holder is experiencing through the buying process and once the policy has been uh, purchased uh, the claim processing claim payment investments this whole process starts right from the marketing to sell a particular insurance policy to a settlement and the closing of the insurance policy if you look at this whole process this is what we are calling as an insurance value chain this entire chain is data driven so that is mean that means analytics plays a much much bigger role in the insurance industry data is the heart data is the life blood in the insurance industry so if wherever data is pretty heavy analytics has to drive that industry so the business performance of that particular industry will improve when you are applying the right set of analytics on the right amount of data for the right kind of business decision so they are they will if, if proper analytics is being uh, applied it is definitely going to boost up the revenues or it could contribute very well to a uh, reduced expenses overall the profitability of the company can typically go up by effective usage of analytics so insurance is one such industry where there is a heavy reliance of data to improve the financial performance to improve the bottom line as well as to really segment the customers target the customers and provide value added services to the policy holders as well as the shareholders in case uh, uh, the insurance company is uh, a shareholder driven one so this is uh, a, a, a main reason data is very important in the insurance industry and analysis on the data really plays a major role in improving the profitability of the industry now what is analytics though there are so many definitions i am primarily talking about the discovery and communication of the meaningful pattern so there is a huge volume of data available so one of the main things is identify discover different patterns in the data more and more meaningful from the business perspective and have an effective mechanism to communicate it to the right set of people sometimes people use a lot of words interchangeably business intelligence they use it interchangeably with analytics but let me tell you it is one major branch of analytics business intelligence per se it is heavily focused on reporting and the data visualization the graphical the the chart based representation different kinds of uh, insights from the data in a visually communicating manner so there uh, the major output that comes out of business intelligence is a dashboard so there are different kinds of technologies that can facilitate the process so it's one of the major subsets of analytics which is heavily focused towards uh, creation of reports and visualizations of the data uh, but at the same time i can talk about uh, the other kinds other branches of analytics nowadays the most emerging branch predictive analytics which actually comprises of data mining the word is very clear i mine through the data to understand the valuable insights from the data and communicate those insights to the right set of people then i am talking about text mining generally we do this uh, text mining from various reviews of the customers we can also do it from social media different kinds of posts that are being typically uh, posted about a particular product so there is a data mining there is a text mining and even the modeling which is helping us to do the predictions and forecasts so all these predictive analytics is one more major branch of analytics which is growing quite heavily nowadays 
I can also look at the advanced visualization, not just the charts and graphs, but I can go with maps, 3D visualizations. So where I'm going much, much beyond the tables, even that kind of analytics is also coming up in a very huge way nowadays. Whatever is the technology, whatever is the technique, whatever is the method of doing analytics, the major bottom line is the business process has to improve. The decision-making skills of the management really needs to go up. The decision-making needs to be more and more data-driven now rather than a gut-feel-driven or what you call as experience-driven. Experience definitely is required, but still a lot of portion of it should be aided by analytics. So which should lead to overall profitability of the organization the overall business performance of the organization should go up. And when I use the word analytics, here we are referring to the usage of statistics in a big way. We talk about various computer programming languages. We talk about subjects like operations research. So all these things put together to derive the meaningful insights from the data, which is what we have coined as analytics. And the data visualization, the more and more advanced forms of data visualization is heavily used to communicate the insights into the data. So when you talk about the overall analytic process within any organization, a raw data is being taken up from various uh, systems, some from marketing databases, some from customer reviews. So the data is taken from multiple sources. All that data is normalized, means the source of the data now becomes more and more immaterial, standardized. Probably let me even use the word standardized. So even if the data is so taken from multiple sources, multiple operational system, that entire thing is standardized, removing uh, the impact of the source of the data. And using various techniques, that entire data is translated into information. The more and more valuable information that is created, the analysis is performed on that information based on which the insights, business insights are typically derived. And these insights should lead to very, very informed decisions, informed actions, which will improve the overall business performance. So that is what is the typical role played by analytics as a part of uh, 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 as a part of the insurance industry. Or for that matter, this is something what we understand when we talk about analytics. Now, just differentiating between the operational and traditional analytics. Sometimes people are calling operational analytics as embedded analytics. Because this is something that is built into the business processes, right? This kind of operational analytics you see in marketing, underwriting, claims, any of these functional areas, we see a lot of uh, we see a lot of analytics typically embedded as a part of the functional areas. So basically, take this example. I'm doing claims management. For me, if I am able to use analytics to identify a fraudulent claim, which means instead of being reactive, I am proactive. If I am able to identify a fraudulent claim, rather than going ahead with first making a payment and then identifying it as a false payment and then trying to initiate a recovery for that payment. You see, there is a, a difference in both the processes. If at all I am having an analytics uh, 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 analytics way, through an analytics way, if I am able to identify that a particular claim that is submitted by a customer is a fraudulent claim, and I knock off that claim there itself, rather than going ahead, making a payment, and then trying to recover for that particular claim. So this is where the operational analytics comes into picture, which means the other way of putting it is operational analytics is more and more real-time in nature. 
I will not uh, do after the transaction processing is done. It is done much before the transaction processing, which means it is more and more proactive in nature. So, I am accessing the data immediately before making a claim settlement. I am accessing the data immediately and it is bringing in more and more value before an action is taken. So, that kind requires real-time analytics, which is what we are calling as operational analytics. Whereas, on the other side, when I talk about a traditional analytics, this kind of analysis happens after the processing is done. So, you have aggregated the whole data. Based on the aggregations of the data, you try to derive some kind of patterns and uh, insights from the data. So, this one is used for future. We are using the predictive analytics, not just understanding the historical trends, numbers, etc. But we are moving more and more towards forecasting. Right? The operational analytics is at that point in time. I want to identify a fraudulent claim. I want to identify a customer uh, who may default in future so that I can take an action immediately. So those are all a part of operational analytics. Seeing whether this customer is a good customer or a bad customer. So initially itself, I will take a call on the customer before progressing further. Now those are all operational analytics which are embedded into the business processes. But when we are talking of traditional analytics, I am using all my historical data, not just for uh, analyzing the past, but to create some kind of uh, forecast, create some kind of models which will do the predictions in the future, which will help me to improve my business performance in the future, which will optimize my business performance more and more uh, heavy. Now, Though insurance companies have a large volume of data, some data is available in plenty with the insurance companies, especially when we talk about the micro level data, which is the operational level data. Lot of insurance companies have lot amount of information relating to the marketing, underwriting, pricing, Lot of micro level data, policy level data and all such kind of stuff is available uh, in plenty with the organization. But when it comes to macro level or a strategic level, when I say strategic level, I want to introduce new products into the market or I want to enter into a completely new geography. If I want to take uh, some such kind of decisions, the internal data availability is very, very limited. In these cases, the insurance companies have to very well resort to more and more external data itself. So, like I can use the psychographic data, the psychological aspects as well as the demographic uh, aspects bundled together. Marketing teams use this kind of a data. So, where they, will, they can augment the existing customer data, right? Uh, based on the existing customer data, whatever they have, they can gather even more additional information regarding the customers. And I can even use this information as a proxy towards target marketing. So once I have the demographic details of the new set of customers, uh, my marketing team can use them for promoting the new products, etc. So, target marketing can be done more effectively by using uh, external data, especially the psychographic related information. At the same time, they look at the profiles of the existing customers and they set them as the base. So, they know the profiles of their existing customers. Based on the profiles of the existing customers, they use these kind of databases to find similar customers who are not yet been tapped and try to make them as a part of their prospects. Try to prospect them, try to sell different kinds of products to them. So, marketing can very well use external data to the fullest, especially the psychographic related uh, information about the customers. Now, when it comes to product managers, they can very well review the rate filings that are being done by each of their competitors. 
so the competitors have to file the the rates that they are offering for each of their products so that the comparison of the products can be done quite effectively they can do the pricing of their product more and more effectively so this data will not be available internally but they can uh, get it from the state filing departments wherein uh, they can get uh, the rates that are being filed by almost all the competitors to get a very important assessment of their products the pricing if they want to review the pricing the kind of target markets that they want to look at all those things can be analyzed by the product managers by getting this external data similarly talking about the claim recovery analysis right claims are being made but we are trying to recover them especially those products which are more and more defective they try to see the warranty data so using warranty information they would like to uh, recover that uh, uh, recover the product for which they have already uh, made the claim any kind of product recall data specific set of cars being recalled by a particular company so whatever the claims that are made on such kind of cars they can very well recover them because that car has been recalled by the company so this information again is not an internal information it's an external one used heavily by the insurers now when it comes to the underwriting department they use the credit worthiness of the customer the capability of the customer to pay premiums on time so even that kind of data that they get from outside especially the credit scoring agencies so regarding uh, the credit worthiness of the customer they, ga they gather the data so that they can take informed decision on whether this customer be granted a policy or not similarly when it comes to the medical managers they can use the prescriptions data even the retail data from the drug stores so prescription data contain all the medicine the retail data from the drug store contains different kinds of medicines that have been sold for different kinds of uh, symptoms so the members can be profiled so these are the people who have typically uh, purchased for diabetes so their profile those kind of people can be profiled and different kinds of wellness disease management programs can very well be targeted towards them now you could really see all these kinds uh, of information which is externally available can very well be procured can very well be integrated to produce uh, in important information for the customers important uh, information uh, for the industry per se on an overall basis now looking at the overall data flow in an industry i'm talking about different channels initiates at the marketing and the sales level so there is a marketing campaign that is being done right there is an acquisition of the customer retention of the customer so these all happen at the marketing and sales layer now so we are we are talking about uh, the marketing once the customer is acquired so he would be typically purchasing any of these uh, products right you can purchase uh, property casualty insurance life insurance health insurance marine insurance any of those things so the marketing is actually giving inputs to the product development so different uh, kinds of policies lines of business so whether it is property casualty uh, life health whatever within that different classes of business what are the different kinds of coverages to provide on different classes of business what is the maximum amount of coverage that needs to be paid what is the deductible how much uh, has to be paid by the customer before uh, the insurance companies can make a claim or can pay a claim the rates and charges for different kinds of products and services so all these things they go as a part of the product development process so and uh, when it comes to uh, the underwriting for any of these policies right for any of these uh, different kinds of policies from the policy holder there is an application to uh, the policy holder fills an application 
right there is a code that is initially uh, provided based on the basic details of the policy holder then when a real policy is being sold to the customer is a new business part is there then there is a renewals part right uh, at regular intervals of time new uh, new things get added to the policy new coverages can get added to the policy as a part of endorsements policy cancellation is one more step and all the lapsed policies can be reinstated so all these different kinds of uh, applications are there which means the data is required at each of these stages then all these policies whatever have been issued by the insurers they may go for a reinsurance for each of them so reinsurance is again insurance company getting uh, insured from another insurance so uh, some amount of uh, uh, some amount of uh, uh, policy uh, is uh, typically uh, retained whereas uh, some amount of it is ceded to the reinsurer so once you have so the assumed part and the ceded part right some proportion it could be a uh, different kinds of uh, reinsurance uh, mechanisms are there so there could be a, a surplus or a quota proportional versus non proportional kind of uh, reinsurance uh, strategies so in any of them there is some portion of uh, insurance that is retained and some portion of it is ceded to the, the reinsurer so again as a part of it commissions are one more thing that are uh, coming out right both for reinsurance stuff or even for the new business and at the same time so again there are direct commissions in assumed commissions and again ceded commissions which are uh, uh, to be uh, uh, which are uh, from the reinsurer then comes the claims processing you have a new and re re new re newly reported claims claims which have been settled and reopened the payment of the claims closing of the claims so all these things right how much of loss has been paid what are the reserves that have been set towards each of these losses now if you see these are the various activities that go as a part of the entire insurance data flow right so and you see the whole data is uh, uh, handled whole variety of data is handled at each of the stages by each of the department so there is the tons of data that is uh, available across the department right from initiating a, a marketing campaign towards uh, and finally towards claim settlement and closing of the claim so there is a huge amount of data flow that is uh, present so efficient capture of the data efficient analysis of the data to produce meaningful insights play a very important role uh, and that's the reason analytics becomes more and more uh, important in such a kind of industry where heavy data flow is being looked at right now that we know that this is <clears throat> the insurance industry data flow we will talk about um, another important concept in this uh, context which is the analytic maturity we talk about uh, the five layers of analytics maturity here analytics laggards right who are more and more reactive who are who have not implemented analytics in a big way who are just using analytics for historical information those kind of companies we call as laggards then analytics aspirants those who are planning to use analytics as a part of their business processes novices they have just implemented started implementing analytics started understanding analytics as a part of their business process practitioners they have been using analytics in their business processes and finally savant which who are the ones uh, who have been stalwarts in the usage of analytics in their organization so the maturity model talks about the increasing sophistication in the use of analytics how sophisticatedly they are using analytics now when we are talking about that we talk about from four different dimensions people processes technology and data 
from people perspective what is the level of sophistication these people have uh, especially the employees how much of analytical skill they have how much of analytics related knowledge they have and company perspective from the company standpoint what is the level of uh, uh, data based decision making what is the kind of data driven culture that is present within the organization all these things contribute uh, the maturity from the people's dimension then we talk about from the processes perspective what is the maturity level with respect to analytics processes in the organization what are the different kinds of processes they are using right right from data collection to analysis to reporting etc then analytics is heavily driven by technology because to process large volumes of data uh, human beings uh, uh, way of uh, doing stuff manual way of doing things is not sufficient so there is a heavy reliance on technology so we have to uh, uh, based on what kind of tools the companies are using what kind of uh, accesses the company the employees have to different kinds of tools talk about the maturity of analytics within that organization and finally the heart of analytics the data to what extent the data is managed what is the level of sophistication that is associated with the management of the data the governance of the data within the organization so based on these four dimensions if i look at the five different kinds of companies right from starting from laggards who are being treated as more and more reactive to analytics servants who are more treated as more and more proactive what is that they do in the laggards you see people make decisions purely gut based no data driven at all but at least in the next stage you have a little bit of analytical awareness among the people and uh, they use analytics they still go with a gut feel in terms of decisions but they try to use analytics to validate that gut feel decision so slight understanding of analytics so they want to put analytics into process but they are slightly skeptical at this moment so when it comes to novices they are more and more tactical in terms of decision making so they take uh, tactical decisions through analytics whereas uh, practitioners <laughs> they try to support the strategic decision long term so tactical is more and more short term decision making strategic is more and more long term decision making so they try to use analytics to support their long term decision making whereas when it comes to the most matured organizations they use analytics to drive the strategy itself the overall business strategy is driven through analytics so the whole uh, analytics is flowing through the dna of those organizations so they have a separate role chief analytics officer so there is a, the career path which is going up to the level of analytics so for me for them every decision that they are taking is only based on analytics so that is the kind of analytics maturity we are talking of from people's perspective processes wise probably when we talk about laggards there is not much of analytics in them so there is no process so they ask in case of aspirers they ask others for the analytics report they at least outsource the analytics uh, processes uh, to uh, outsiders so whereas when it comes to novices they generate some of their reports they do some basic analysis but reporting is done heavily in those organizations whereas when it comes to practitioners they are the business participants so you have various uh, business analysts data steward kind of roles and uh, you could see that in case of servants they are pretty heavy mentors of analytics so there is a mentoring typically done their entire uh, culture is analytics driven and uh, Uh, they they keep all the processes which are more and more of uh, communication through analytics coming to technology laggards use only excel 
whereas uh, uh, they have uh, reporting the uh, analytic aspirals have a standard reporting mechanism and there is uh, ad hoc reporting which is very very limited mostly it's a standard reporting but ad hoc reporting is very limited when it comes to novices yes they have some levels of ad hoc reporting which means they can they can change the queries based on the queries they they would like to look out for uh, improved reports etc they also go for dashboards so they have been they will be using dashboards for assessing the high level uh, stuff about the organization whereas when it comes to practitioners they are very high towards the data visualizations and exploration but when it comes to savants they are much much beyond it they try to use analytics for prediction purposes they do lots and lots of text mining sentiment analysis lots of advanced technologies are being adopted by these savants when it uh, comes to using analytics for decision making purposes data wise data silos different uh, systems containing different kinds of data and even the quality of data is not that good so here they have an understanding of the awareness of the quality of the data right whereas the novices maintain data marts they maintain a data dictionary and when it comes to practitioners they have integrated data views data from multiple systems get integrated and presented they have some kind of practices relating to the data governance whereas when it comes to savants again they have embedded analytics as a part of their decision making process itself so for them it's a strategic asset data is the strategic corporate asset which differentiates them from their competitor it's a core competitive advantage they carry data is typically being treated as a creator of core competitive advantage for them vis-a-vis -vis their competitor so this is how you look at the different uh, layers of analytics maturity and organizations have to do an assessment of where they fall with respect to all these four factors uh, in terms of their analytics implementation within their organization now if you look at uh, from an insurance industry perspective yes there are different kinds of analytics combined together forms the insurance analytics talk about marketing analytics i'll use it for customer segmentation i can use it for cross selling the products i can use it for upselling campaigns i can create different kinds of marketing campaigns by under by using the various techniques of marketing analytics similarly from the product management perspective i can try to drive product profitability by doing a product management analytics underwriting analytics can be done quite heavily to do effective risk management to do the pricing of the product more and more more effectively claims analytics i can uh, evaluate the claims i can do sufficient reserving come out with various reserving mechanisms for different kinds of claims settlement of the claims can be done more effectively by doing analytics on the claims wherever recoveries uh, can be initiated they can be done more effectively and even the fraud detection can be done more and more effectively to identify the fraudulent claim all these are done quite comfortably when we have a, a well built claims analytics system in place similarly when we talk about enterprise risk analytics there is a focus on solvency capital allocation they they all can be done quite effectively getting into enterprise risk analytics now when i do sales analytics i can do a, uh, i can do evaluation of the channel i can do a agency evaluation right i can do even the compensation management for the various uh, uh, various uh, levels across the value chain and even the proper financial management practices in place for planning budgeting forecasting all these things now when we are doing insurance analytics it means that it's a sum total of all these various dimension all these various uh, areas from which the data can be pulled and insights can be aggregated and presented so this is how you could see the various activities in marketing analytics i can do a lead generation right market research i can use it for business development campaign management advertising promotions a lot of these things i can do if i have a well built marketing analytics practice internally 
I can do a channel management, sales management, field development, compensation management, training, productivity, all these things can be improved if I have proper sales analytics in place. Similarly, customer service analytics can be improved. Using customer service analytics, I can improve my new business processes, renewals, payments, complaints, inquiries can be handled more and more effectively. Underwriting analytics can help me in assessing the risk more effectively. Better classification of the risk, pricing of the products can be done more effectively, thus leading to overall profitability of the product and even the overall organization. Similarly, actuarial analytics can help me in terms of developing proper rates for each of the, uh, uh, each of the uh, uh, factors and I can do a proper filings. Product development can be done quite effectively. New product introduction can be done quite effectively. Reserving can be done more and more effectively. So actuarial anal analytics can really help in doing these kind of process. Claim analytics helps in registration, registering uh, claims appropriately, any kind of adjustments to be made, fraudulent claims management. I can do a medical management uh, by integrating with the medical records and based on that, based on that leading to a real-time claim processing, litigation management can be done very effectively. Similarly, uh, when I use legal analytics, compliance becomes more and more uh, up to date, right? Complaint management becomes more and more efficient, litigation support improves. Similarly, I can work with supplier analytics where contracting, resource management, expense management, performance management can be very well improved. Financial analytics help in doing a proper planning, budgeting, profitability management, performance management, reporting, reinsurance, all of them become very effective through this. And finally, my asset management, capital management become more and more effective when I use my investment analytics. So you talk about the different streams and each stream using different practices of analytics really help a company to uh, mature into a much, much, uh, 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 much, much sophisticated manner, uh, improving the overall profitability and thus improving the overall business process of the organization as such. Now, coming to the different kinds of users of analytics who do not use analytics in organization, especially in insurance companies, there is no one who will not use data, who will not use analytics. You could see under actuaries use analytics, underwriters we have seen in the previous slide, almost uh, different kinds of analytics for different departments. So you could look at claim professionals using analytics, loss control specialists using analytics, marketing guys, finance guys, customer service guys. So across you see the usage of analytics. But the only difference you see is different roles have different needs with respect to analytics. If you look at the CEOs and the senior management, they want only the key metrics, the overall high level metrics in a very highly visual and they should be in a consumable format. So they give very high level instructions on what is that they look at as a part of their data. So dashboards play a very important role in, in, in terms of reporting things to the senior management. Even the scorecards play a very important role and not just on the desktops. They want these things available on the mobiles, tablets, etc. Now this is what uh, is, uh, is uh, the analytics dimension from the senior management perspective. But when it comes to the middle management, they are more looking at the operational level dashboards. They should, uh, it's not a high level picture. They should be able to drill down. In some cases, they should look at the standard reports, whereas in some cases, uh, it should help them to produce the ad hoc reports based on the queries that they provide. And at the same time, they want these kind of facilities both on the desktops as well as mobiles and other portable devices as well. But when you go one more level deeper to the level of analysts, they want complete details where they can dig through the data. 
they should be able to manipulate the data as well. They should be able to create additional metrics. They have to create their own reports. So that kind of usage is there by the analyst. So you could say that uh, uh, people at the top, they use it uh, as a very concise and crisp kind of an information. Whereas uh, when it comes more and more to the bottom level, they focus more and more of very, very detailed, minute level. Uh, so the tools and technologies that they use differ at each of the levels quite, uh, uh, quite heavily. But now, now that the data analytics is very much an inevitable thing as a part of the insurance industry, now it's our uh, focus to understand what are the main challenges to adopting analytics in a full-fledged manner in an insurance uh, industry? One of the major challenges we see is lack of data access, right? Especially when we talk about complete data, right? Claims are captured, but all the claims are incomplete. Trusted, when I say trusted, this data, quality-wise, it's good, but is it worth for this intended purpose? Understandable. So, that is one major area we see with respect to the insurance data. There is a huge volume of data, no doubt. But to what extent the data is used for its intended purpose? I need to really understand what are the nuances that are there with respect to the data. So, there should be process where I collect my structured data in the form of tables, etc. But along with that, I should be able to capture the unstructured data, which comes as a part of my text data, which, uh, which comes out of the feedbacks from the customers. Or I can look at the sentiment data of the customers from the social media or any other sources. All these things need to be integrated to perform a overall analysis of the data. So that's one of the main challenge. What kind of data, what is the level of access to the data that these companies have? And the kind of governance processes they have in place is also a major challenge. Right? When they have a very good governance process, they will typically ensure that the documentation of the existing data is done. And uh, what kinds of new data is required and there will be a clear cut uh, requirements and definitions with respect to what type of newer data is typically required. And if you see the actuarial department or the finance department, they will have different kinds of data. They will understand the data governance process more effectively because uh, they are the guys who are more and more responsible for reporting, whether it is internal reporting or external reporting. So for them, the data quality becomes more and more important and even the data integrity, how well the data is integrated from various sources. So the, the setting of solid data governance processes can be very well handled by these departments. And we really need to be aware of all the kinds of challenges that are available in integrating the data from various sources to build an integrated view of the overall organization's capabilities. Then comes to the major uh, challenge in terms of lacking of analytical skills. Many of the organizations don't have the awareness. Majorly, they rely on the gut feel decisions. And they, they have, uh, they have, uh, they, they have been continuously mistaking reporting per analytics, right? Whatever the reporting they do at regular intervals, they say they are doing analytics, but these two are two different uh, pictures altogether. There should be more and more focus on data exploration, bringing valuable insights from the data, data visualization through various user-friendly tools to improve the insights into the data. Nowadays, the organizations are hiring newer employees with different kinds of analytical skills so that the existing uh, skills of the em existing employees can be improved quite uh, uh, heavily through the knowledge that is uh, being uh, held by these newer set of employees. Then the other challenge comes in terms of the analytical tools that are available. 
because there is a very important need to select the right tool to use for right kind of uh, analysis for the right set of users. If you look at the executives, we have already talked, they use highly visual information. They want more and more summarized kind of analytics. So for them, those tools that perform dashboards and especially uh, not just on desktops but on mobile devices. So that's the kind of technology that they would be more interested in. But when you come to the other end of the spectrum, the analysts, they want more and more robust tools where data manipulation can be done quite comfortably, mergings of the data from various sources can be initiated quickly, data additions, value added information to the data, augmenting the data should be a more easier and smoother, new calculation should be performed very quickly and any kind of complex analysis should be done very, very quickly. So this is what analysts typically expect from the tools that are being procured by the organization. On the other side, when you look at the data scientists who are responsible for making uh, marketing, finance, actuarial kind of uh, uh, decisions based on the data, they want those kind of uh, uh, tools which can do very heavy predictive analytics and they have very good amount of statistical capabilities. So you see that Dip, uh, people at different layers within the organization have different requirements regarding the data. So the technology that uh, they would be more interested in, the tools that they would be more interested in for procurement keeps on differing. And this is where the organizations need to evaluate all the needs across the layers of the organization to build in this kind of culture within the organization. Then a few organizations today have the Business Intelligence Center of Excellence, which will take care of providing the trainings on various new tools, technologies coming up. They try to encourage the usage of various tools uh, into their business processes. Any new tools come up, they play a role in terms of uh, uh, evaluating and selecting the new tools for the organization. Overall, the BI strategy for the organization will be defined and executed, which will finally lead to the overall data governance aspect as such. So once this is implemented heavily within the organization, the analytics maturity of the organization becomes more and more sophisticated. Talking about the technology, right? there are various kinds of technologies that are available. Look at enterprise information management tools. It helps in better accessing of the data and the integration of the data. And it also plays an important role on if at all I am bringing in a new technology, to what extent it would impact the existing analytics. Would it improve? Would there be some modifications that I have to do to the existing uh, analytics within my organization? All those things will be uh, will be better uh, evaluated through the enterprise information management tool. We have in-memory databases where the focus is more and more on performance increasing and the speed. More and more granular data is processed and uh, at, at a much quicker speed so that the pricing can be done more effectively, reserving can be done more effectively. So, there are a, quite a few databases which are in memory. Then the GPS, geographic position systems and geomapping technologies. So they are very much helpful for the organizations to really augment the risk and the loss data. So seeing geography related uh, risk, geography related losses, where the underwritings can be done uh, one more level deeper. Different kinds of visualization tools will really help in making more and more sense of the market data, more sense of the customer data. And they have a lot of accesses to machine generated data, especially in automobile insurance. Through various kinds of devices, the machine related data is being tracked and used for uh, designing the policies uh, uh, or augmenting the benefits that uh, are being uh, packaged along with the policy. So data anywhere, anytime, any device, that is what is the mantra of the day. 
So which means the security of the data becomes more and more crucial and critical. So technology no doubt plays an important role in the success of analytics uh, in the current generation. If you look at uh, how the analytics has matured over the period, right from creating uh, a simple product value, we have moved towards uh, customer segment value. For each customer, we started looking at the lifetime value. And this value management also is becoming more and more dynamic. So that's how the management uh, marketing is. Uh, marketing has evolved through the, uh, through the analytics usage. Earlier, it used to start with one product fix all approach. Slowly, we started unbundling the coverages. Now, there is a time where the process is moving towards a menu based approach. Right? This is where we are currently. Even here, customer segment value, but this is how you can evolve. Menu driven approach towards uh, the choosing the coverages. And overall, it can become customer driven and profitability driven. When you talk about uh, the pricing and underwriting, yes, traditionally it's a class-based class rating. So different kinds of classes are identified and one single rate for each of the class. Then there is a portfolio analysis that has been performed on each of the classes. Now, uh, there is even more a maturity with respect to uh, a household analysis. The analysis is performed at a household analysis level. Tier based rating plans have evolved, moved from class based rating to a tier based rating, but it can very comfortably move towards the risk based pricing, pricings and ad hoc pricings, etc. Similarly, claims wise, unit focused claim management, which is what is very heavily in vogue today, but if I use analytics more effectively, it can become more uh, integrated, right? More and more uh, reactive, but still it is reactive but it could become integrated and uh, it can even move towards the driver based historical claim management and which could uh, go towards the predictive claims management altogether. So that is where the claims management can improve and evolve as a part of the insurance analytics. When it comes to accounting and finance, traditional planning and budgeting softwares are typically being used. But now there is a move towards the driver based planning and budgeting and uh, slowly this would be integrated as a part of the other business processes as well. And finally, it should go towards uh, predictive based planning. Similarly, uh, when you talk about metro metrics, most of them are uh, siloed and they are all lagging metrics itself, but slowly it moves towards the integrated predictive models and metrics. Similarly, data wise, earlier it used to be more and more of a poor quality siloed kind of a data. Now there is a kind of data assembled across the product lines, some kind of data availabilities are there. But as we move further, we could see that atomic detail data, wisdom, predictive related data, the one that can help for doing all these kinds of model is going to evolve as a part of the insurance analytics. So this is what uh, is the target where the insurance analytics can move and evolve across all these various uh, uh, segments within the insurance industry. So these are some of the things that I wanted to cover as a part of this uh, session. If you have any further queries regarding the same, you can get in touch with me by giving me a call on the number that I have provided below or you can send in an email at wamsizar at the rate of peacegurus.com. Thanks a lot for listening to this uh, session. Thank you very much.